A couple of years ago, my father asked me if I wanted to go to Las Vegas when I turned 21. Normally, a teenager would have been ensnared by the prospect of gracing Sin City in all of its glory. However, I declined. I asked him if I could take a trip to the Himalayas, into the mountains, to an isolated island, even a national forest instead. Somewhere where I felt like I belonged. You see, ever since I was a child, I've always had an affinity to his natural world and its beautiful inhabitants. Be it launching an awareness campaign with a major environmental organization, or feeding wild cows, goats, dogs, and cats in India, I found many ways to help out animals and the environment. But what has surprisingly contributed the most is my diet. I have been a vegetarian my whole life. It is an integral part of my identity, and I see it as a really large factor in how much I care for animals and how much I'm willing to do for them. So, by a raise of hands, how many of you here today are a vegetarian or some iteration of it? That's pretty good, I'm happy to see that. So some of you might actually be able to relate to some of the lifestyle choices that I get asked a lot of questions about. Questions such as, do you get enough protein? Questions such as, aren't you sick of just eating fruits and vegetables? And my personal favorite, how do you do it? All of these questions really illustrate how little people know about a good vegetarian diet. Any diet, if unbalanced, is bound to be unhealthy by convention. However, people are always first to assume that vegetarians and vegans are actually less healthy and more malnourished than the rest of us. Why? A vegetarian diet has been proven to decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. It is filled with carbohydrates, fats, fibers, vitamins, minerals, and yes, even proteins. <laughs> you see, all of these components, there are so many readily available sources that are natural, especially for proteins like soy, buckwheat, quinoa, legumes, beans, the list is endless. So on the other hand, we have a diet high in the consumption of animal proteins. We see increased risks of cardiovascular disease, high cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes. Sound familiar? It's the exact opposite of a vegetarian diet. A lot of people are unaware of the impact that eating animal proteins actually has on our bodies. Studies have actually illustrated that we see increased levels of phosphorus in the blood, high toxicity of free radicals, bone degradation, and even the release of a hormone called IGF-1, which causes the proliferation of cells, dramatically increasing the risk of developing and spreading cancer. All of these effects are extremely detrimental for the human body, and given the heightened rate of diet and health-related diseases out there in the world, such as obesity and diabetes, it is a growing concern for all people out there, and not just for us adults, but for our children as well. This is why people have been switching to vegetarian and vegan diets, because they are seen as balanced, natural, healthy, but most importantly, humane. The animals we eat, the animals we choose to put on our plates, the ones we consume, are all a select species. Cows, pigs, chickens, fish, goats. But we don't recognize that these are only a few that we consider okay to consume. We don't know of the treatment that they have to deal with on a daily basis, the suffering. Because in factory farms, they're enclosed in tight spaces, kept in filthy, unhygienic conditions. They are beaten, tortured, they are electrocuted, hung upside down, their throats are slit. The children, when they are born, are torn away from their parents and families. But this does not only end with the meat industry. The egg and dairy industries as well exploit animals on an exponential level. For example, the second baby chicks are born, 
they are separated into two compartments, females and males. The females make their way on to grow in an egg farm where they can produce eggs someday. The males are put on a conveyor belt, heading straight for a grinder. And these chicks have just hatched, and they are being sentenced to death? Why is that? It's because they hinder profit. They are seen as useless, rendered a loss by the companies that exploit all these animals every single day. Why is this happening? This goes on. This goes beyond our consumption of animals. This goes into our demands for fur, for oil, for leather, and for feathers. All of these things combined together have led to the endangerment of multiple species. Animals out there in the African plains, they are hunted. Their heads are hung on people's walls like trophies. And those people convince themselves that they are actually doing good by their massive donations. However, how many ever animals we keep in zoos and how many ever animals we care about saving the pandas, saving the whales, it nothing compares to the billions and billions of animals we kill every day just for our consumption. If someone were to eat a panda bear, they would be called a monster. You would be like, what's wrong with you, man? But if someone were to eat a hamburger or bacon, they're just a consumer. They're just a normal person. Why is that? Why is it that we don't recognize the sentience of these animals? Why is it that we don't see that they too have the capability of having feelings? That they suffer, they feel pain, they have emotions? Why is it that we don't see the difference between the dogs, cats, the horses, all these animals that we've domesticated, and then all these animals that we eat? The answer? is cognitive dissonance. It is an uncomfortable feeling experienced by someone who holds two or more contradictory values. Essentially, it's a state of denial. This isn't the first time we've experienced cognitive dissonance as a species. We experienced cognitive dissonance when we enslaved people. We experienced cognitive dissonance when we denied women the right to vote. We experience cognitive dissonance during the Holocaust and arguably all major wars, and today we experience that very same cognitive dissonance with our diets. We choose not to educate ourselves on the suffering of those millions of animals. We choose to view them as lesser than the ones we hold in our homes, the ones we call our family. We choose not to identify that our diets are built upon the very foundation of death, suffering, and carnage. I'm not here to tell you what's right and what's wrong. We already know what's wrong, but this cannot carry on any further. This goes beyond unethical treatment. This goes beyond corporate chasing profit. This goes beyond billions and billions, 56 billion animals killed every single year just so we can put them on our plates. Because this is a matter of the existence of our planet. Our addiction to animal products is a leading cause of the degradation of our planet's atmosphere, resources, and species. It is a leading cause of climate change. Now, I'm sure you all must have heard some iteration of climate change here or there. It is essentially the accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that lead to a change in climate. Greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. How these gases work is that they accumulate in the atmosphere, thickening our ozone layer. They trap heat from the sun that is usually supposed to bounce off our surface, and as a result, it increases our surface temperature. This leads to a phenomenon we commonly know as global warming. Global warming causes the breaking of our glaciers, the melting of our ice caps, and the rising of our sea levels. It increases the risk of natural disasters. All these floods, wildfires, hurricanes, earthquakes, droughts, it is no coincidence that we are seeing an increased rate of these over the past few years. But we cannot just blame the oil, coal, and natural gas companies for this. Although they are emitting so much carbon dioxide that it is choking our atmosphere and our planet, we too are to blame with our diets. Because the input of what it takes to produce animal products far exceeds the output. 
It takes thousands of liters of water just to produce one kilogram of beef, milk, and eggs. That is such a large amount of water considering many countries in the planet are facing severe droughts and they don't have clean water to drink. If that isn't enough to shock you, maybe this fact will. 40% of our Earth's land goes to producing animal products. 40%. How? Deforestation. You know, the common culprits, logging, agribusiness, cattle raising, all of these things have led to the deforestation of our two largest rainforests on this planet, the Amazon and the Indonesian rainforest in Sumatra. We are causing habitat loss of millions of animals. We are causing them to perish because we are destroying their homes. This has gone beyond everything we could have possibly imagined. This is not a lack of awareness. This is a lack of taking the ability to grow out of our cognitive dissonance. This goes beyond renewable energy. That is on a rise. This goes beyond the UN Development Sustainable Goals that every single country in the Paris Climate Agreement agreed to promise by. Those are already happening. This goes beyond every single thing that we imagined possible because this is because of our choices, because of our dietary choices. I have thrown a lot of facts and figures your way, and it may be a little overwhelming to process all of it. So I'll just say this. Are we really going to leave this planet in worse shape than which we got it? Are we really going to keep a future for our children where they never see snow, polar bears, marine life, coral reefs? Are we really going to ensure that our oceans are dying, that 50% of our coral reefs have disintegrated over the past 30 years whilst they absorb one third of the planet's carbon dioxide emissions? Are we really going to let these dead zones in the ocean, devoid of life for miles, really dictate our future? Are we going to have wars over water to drink or land on which to live? No, we won't. We won't let it get there. Because we, as people, control the economy. Our demand increases their supply. We stop demanding, they stop supplying. So it's about time to escape the conundrum of corporate profit and really take a stand together. Because all it takes is for us to work together as a collective species. This is not an issue that's out of our hands. This is not something we have no control over. This is entirely due to us. I believe all of you can be impact makers. That you have the power to change the world for a better and overcome our collective species state of dissonance. Because what makes us revolutionaries is that we identify a problem, we find a viable solution to it, and we go fix it. We find a way to get from point A to point B. I stand here today atop nothing other than my passion, grit, and tenacity. I stand here today, and all I ask of you is to stand with me. No matter who you are, stand with me. No matter where you come from, stand with me. No matter how little you think you are able to make a big difference, stand with me. Because all it takes is a voice. All it takes is a push in the right direction, a leap of faith, a glimmer of light in the darkness. I know that I have the power and momentum to inspire change. I know that I can cause a series of events that we could have never imagined possible. And I know that I have identified a problem, found a viable solution to it, and presented it to you. So, I hope that this talk has been that very momentum to get you to point A. Thank you.